Hey everyone, uh, sorry I know I'm a little late with this one, um, but I've been working away um, cutting an episode of an anthology series and it's really intense. It's going to be a really, really great uh, production, but it's, you know, it's taken up a lot of my time. So um, I haven't been posting as much, but earlier this week I did release an update to a media composer. We now have 2023.3, so let's take a look at what's new. Right, so first off, um, there's a couple of things I can't really demonstrate and test, so I'm just going to speak to them a bit. And the first of these is uh, improvements to the export Pro Tools session option that was introduced in the last Media Composer update, uh, which is mostly adding similar functionality you'll find in MDV um, or in you know Avid's uh, export AAF function, where you can compare a previous sequence that you've already exported um, and ignore any media that you've already sent, basically. You know, the options for this export Pro Tools session are quite thorough at this point. Um, you know, we can convert media to different codecs, both our video and our audio. We um, can include the field recorder bin metadata or not. We can convert wave media, uh, compare from a previous sequence that we've already sent, as we said. We can choose which markers to include. Um, we can include, include markers only from the video tracks or the audio tracks or only a specific color. So maybe, um, as I often do as well when I'm doing a turnover, you have a specific colour for sound notes or ADR notes or something like that. And those are the only markers that are really valid and that need to be sent to sound. So this definitely does seem like, you know, it's being built towards the way to go to do sound turnovers uh, eventually. But for now, the two post facilities that I've had to do sound turnovers for since this feature came out um, have insisted on the good old fashioned tried and true AAF method. So until that changes, this will be uh, just left for testing and media composer for me. But if any of you guys have actually used it to turn over to a facility, please do let me know how you got on and uh, um, you know, how, how the facility found linking it in. Um, I'd be curious to know um, how well it works at the other end, because this feature set seems great, um, but, you know, I don't know much about Pro Tools, so I don't know how it would come up, come up in that end. Right, now this next feature, uh, again, is one that I can't really test, and that's because it's only exclusive to uh, Media Composer Enterprise users. Sorry, guys. Um, and this one is if you're remoting into a facility using Nexus Edge, uh, you're now able to copy media to and from the Avid Nexus remotely. So you can stream your media, um, you know, it can be on the, the Nexus in the facility and you can be editing on your machine as was initially pitched with Nexus Edge. Or you can have that media transferred w within the bin, just in the, in the file manager, you can have it sent locally to you. You can send stuff that you've imported locally to the facility and back and forth in the background as you work. So, yep, uh, a great feature to, to include in that use case, um, but not really one I can make use of. I can only look at that and hope that some of these Media and Composer Enterprise features trickle their way down to Avid Ultimate and Avid Standard, um, you know, for this kind of file management, even between drives or not necessarily a Nexus, but if we were able to move stuff back and forth and have it across different drives that easily, that'd be nice. Right now, there's one more feature that I can only really talk about, not demonstrate. And that is because um, you can only use it in a shared environment. Like if you're in an Avid Nexus at a facility or some sort of network shared storage and you're working with other editors. Um, you know, now I do have Avid Ultimate installed. Like uh, I can have shared bins, but I can't exactly record these videos in facilities. They get a bit weird about it. They won't really like it. So I'm going to have to just talk about it and show you here. In your sidebar or project window, Avid has now added this option when you right-click the bin called Protect Project Bin. And this differs from uh, locking the bin in only one particular way. You see, when you lock a bin, um, it locks out all other users except you. Um, and nobody else can make changes to it. They're, they all get read-only access with the exception of yourself. You can still make tweaks and changes. Protect Project Bin protects it from everyone, including yourself. So. This will be for your masters, your, you know, your lot cuts, your sequences you don't want to change. You don't want anybody to tinker with or change anything about this bin. You fully protect it and leave it there. And of course, uh, if you change your mind or if you did this to the wrong bin or if you then want to make changes, this can easily be undone just by right clicking the bin and selecting unlock project bin, um, giving you a nice unlock bin to make changes once again. Right, now that's enough about features we can't show. Let's take a look at one that we can. And the first one that I want to show is actually one that I got really excited about, probably a bit too excited about. Um, it's a small quality of life improvement, but it's one that I had a bit of a rant on the Avid Editors of Facebook page specifically requesting back in December. And lo and behold, it's here. We can now create a folder within a folder. 
Thank you, Avid. Much appreciated. Right now, this next newly added feature um, is building upon Avid's recent um, moves to support editors coming over from Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, which we saw when they added uh, specific keyboard layouts for those NLEs um, into the default user settings. In 2023.3, Avid's taking that same idea just one step further. Now, when you go to create a new user setting, we have these two options here. We can choose the Media Composer default, um, where it will create the same basic Avid default setting that we all know and love. Or we can choose this option of transitioning from Adobe Premiere Pro. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a fresh user setting um, with a workspace that looks like Adobe Premiere. So you can see here, now that I've launched it, that it's just made a workspace and moved everything around to the default layout in Premiere. Um, we've got our bins and folders down here, um, our timeline, our audio tool um, for our meters, and then our viewers up here. Now it is quite a small uh, change since configuring your workspace in Avid to be like Premiere, you know, you can only really take that so far since they do work a bit differently with the, the way their effects controls are positioned and things like that. Um, and one thing that I did find a bit weird and interesting about this is if you open up your settings and preferences here, although they have that Premiere Pro uh, keyboard layout, that isn't selected by default if you enable this mode. So they've specifically made an option to create a user profile for Premiere Pro users transitioning over. Um, but all it really seems to do, as far as I can tell, um, is change this layout ever so slightly um, to make it look a bit like Premiere. But, you know, there's this, you know, keyboard layout from Premiere as well. It just seems a, a little odd that that's not ticked by default when you enable this mode since, you know, the whole point is to ease over that transition. So yeah, uh, that would just be my suggestion to Avid is, um, you know, f for this particular user profile, I would have that ticked by default um, and then you could, you know, change to select the Avid modes. I mean, most editors, to be fair, um, if you're a seasoned editor, whether it's an Avid or Premiere or Resolve or whatever else, you probably do have a custom keyboard by this point. Um, so like the these default keyboard layouts, I'm not gonna say are massively um, helpful, but it would just make the transition a, a bit, a little bit smoother, um, I think, if that was the default when you enabled this mode. Right now, our last major addition here in 2023.3 is the enabling of Live Link in UME linked files. Now, if you're not familiar with Live Link, let me explain. Say you have a file linked in your timeline that you're working with, and it's a animation file or a visual effects file. Um, and then uh, they make a new version of this file um, outside, you know, they say they've just updated the, the visual effects, they improved the comp a little bit, um, but the duration hasn't changed um, and the file name hasn't changed. You know, they're not using version numbers. Um, and then you replace the file in the same location where it's being linked to. Um, Avid should then in theory just see the change and it should just update on the timeline. Um, this is a similar method to how a lot of animation houses will work um, using uh, Adobe Premiere and sometimes Resolve. Um, that is one of the primary reasons why a couple of animation places I know like to use Premiere is because it enables them to do that. So now this has been enabled with Avid's UME linking engine, which should make it work better and faster um, than the last couple of times I tried it, which didn't go too well. Um, so let's give it a go. So first of all, before I link in this file, I just want to show you that if you go, um, if you click the little toggle here in your source browser with link enabled, you'll get to your link settings. And then under link options, this is where you'll enable live link. As long as that's ticked there, um, Avid should always be on the lookout um, for your linked files. And you know, it should be able to refresh um, for any changes that have been made externally outside of Media Composer. So we've got that ticked. Let's link in a file. So I'm going to link in my Avid Assistant tag that comes up at the beginning of these videos here. Um, it's been rendered out as Apple ProRes 42. So we'll be able to link this in with UME, enabling this live link feature. So here we have it here. We've got it linked in Avid. It plays perfectly fine. As you can see. Now let's make a quick little change to this um, and replace the file in the source and then see if it updates in Avid. So 
So just to make this change nice and obvious, I'm just going to change the text at the end to green instead of purple. Should be easy to spot. So I'm going to replace and overwrite the existing one in the same place. I'll have the same name, same duration. That's all very important. If the duration changes or if the name changes, Avid will likely see it as a different file. And all Avid's going to see is that the old file's gone and there's a new file there. So your file will just be offline in Media Composer. So for this to work, it has to be named the same. Right now, here I am in the uh, file location. I can play this down. And you can see that at the end, text is now green. Let's jump back to Avid and see what Avid thinks of that. Right, so full disclosure, I did get a warning that Avid stopped responding right after I had rendered this file out. Um, now that I've tabbed back, it is beach balling like crazy. Um, so I'll give it another minute and if it doesn't come to, I'll force close it and then reboot it and we'll see if maybe Avid just needed, you know, the project to be closed and reopened um, to, to see the change. A wee minute later. Right, so update there. I did have to force close Avid. It didn't respond. Um, and when I relaunched it, um, it was like it hadn't saved in a while. It had sort of reverted back. Um, enable live link wasn't ticked. The file wasn't even linked in the bin. So what we're going to do now this time is I'm going to try it again. Um, but this time I'm going to link the file in. Test it, make sure it plays. see we've got our green text there because this is the new one we've made then I'm going to save the bin close the bin then what we'll do is we'll come back to motion here I'm going to go file revert to saved o overwrite it again and then we'll go back to avid and see if just making sure the bin was saved and closed um, you know, that that might have fixed the problem. So let's give it Avid the benefit of the doubt. Right, so back to Avid here and moment of truth. It's worked. Good to know. Okay, docs. So all you need to make sure you do is if you're visual effects artist um, or you know your animators or wh whomever's making these updated files that you're going to be linking in, um, just make sure you have your bin saved and ideally closed uh, before you replace them in the source where they're being linked to. And then once, you, once they've all been overwritten, open up the bin again um, and take a look at your sequences um, or your clips. You should be all good because it's definitely worked here. We're back to purple again. Now, a couple of other things to mention here before I leave you. The first being that um, it's not just always about new features. There have been a whole number of bugs fixed and squashed in this release, a number of them being really, really useful ones. You know, like there was an issue to the override all bin font sizes, which is a feature I really like to use. That's been fixed. Um, linking to ARRI files has been fixed. Editing master captions, you know, um, f issues with some floating windows saving, all kinds of, you know, uh, bug fixes have happened there. There's, you know, one, two, three, you know, almost four pages worth um, of bug fixes here. So thank you, Avid Devs. That's always much appreciated. And the second thing that I wanted to mention, as always, is to make sure that you are updating your Avid user settings when you leap to a new version. Um, I accidentally tried this earlier with uh, my 2012 settings. I did um, update my settings when I made the new version, um, but just when I launched Media Composer, I was going between the two versions, and I, I did encounter some bugs and weird weird behavior, of, like the playhead was disappearing and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so just create your new user settings um, upon each release. The video that I have on best practices for updating Media Composer will show you the fastest way to port your settings over um, whilst creating you know, a fresh set. Um, and what I mean by that is you can create a fresh set of user settings, but still keep your custom keyboard and, and, and little things like that. Um, you, know, you will have to do some new setup, but it will you know, save you a lot of headaches and, and bugs and, and you know, weird behavior that you get with the new version. It's just always be best practice, creating your user settings, trust me. I'll have that video linked down below, as well as a link to the README for this version, 
um, but you'll be able to find it um, in the Avid Download Center under Avid Media Composer. Just sign in, go to Download Center, and it'll be there. Now, if all you're looking to do is check um, compatibility with your operating system, um, then you can do this on Avid's Media Composer uh, version matrix. Um, I'll have a link to this down below as well. Um, for macOS, that's qualified up to 13.2.1. And you can also see this at Chris Bowe's awesome alwaysediting.com website, uh, where he lists all of the qualified hardware, both Mac and Windows, um, right there, nice, nice and clear, with lovely graphics and formatting. It's, it's just beautiful. Thanks again, Chris. But uh, that's more or less it for all this info from me. Um, I will promise that next time I should be getting the, these Avid updates videos to you a bit quicker. I'm hoping to have it to you on release day. And I'm able to do that because um, I've now been invited into a, a testing program where I'll get to see versions of Media Composer just a few days early before release to play it around with it and report any bugs and things like that. So while I obviously won't be able to say anything during that time, it means that as soon as the official version is actually released to the world, um, I should have the video ready to go and I can show all you guys now. Um, so, but I'll definitely do that for the next one. Thanks for watching. See you then.